Here's a project that I've been working on for a while and has caused me a lot of grief, but I think it's safe to say I'm on the backside and it's looking pretty good. At least I think it's looking pretty good. What do you guys have to say about it? So this piece right here is part of the cowl or the intake or the induction on the 182. And what you're looking at is where the front of the cowl mates up to this piece and the filter gets installed right here. So the book actually calls it a filter mount and this S duct or plenum or whatever you want to call it mounts up to the carburetor. For years, this thing has kind of vibrated loose and the holes on the bottom of it that mount to the cowl started to work themselves loose and if any oil or anything drips in there it exasperates the problem now you've got you know little bits of oil going through the rivets and starting to vibrate and the rivets are working so now they're smoking meaning there's like streaks of black uh well mostly oil or aluminum powder coming out of the rivets from the vibration anyways it's not good there's no way to fix it except take it apart clean it all up put it back together the proper way so what i did was i removed this from the cowl bunch of rivets right here attached to the face of the cowl and then i noticed that this piece right here uh, seen better days it had previously been repaired and there was fiberglass on it and it was not pretty i didn't really want to put it back together like that so i decided now's the time to do it take it all apart fix it put it back together drilled all the rivets out fixed all the fiberglass here's a little bit of what it looked like before during and now after and once i got this piece all cleaned up and fiberglassed and sanded and fit and primed and painted and well not quite painted yet but primed it's time to put it back on the duct or the plenum or whatever you want to call this thing and then once this is all back together i can rivet it back to the cowl and move on with my life and hopefully it's good till the year 2065. But one of the things I did, I sealed the seams so that if oil does leak or drip or somehow find its way in there, it won't get into the rivets like it did before. All this glass work, probably what took me the most amount of time. I laid glass on both sides in the edge right there. And then a piece of glass on each side right there. And all the corners got glassed and everything got fit and sanded. And I don't know if you can tell, but I did my silicone gasket trick around the edge here so that there's no air gap so that this thing will fit tight against the cowl and it's not pulling on the metal and it's not causing the fiberglass to flex any more than it needs to so that should prevent and eliminate cracks in the future what i'm doing right now is going through all the rivets attaching it to the plenum so i've got all three sides here done you can see i've got the rivets going from the inside out and i put a washer on the back side yeah it's coming out really nice. I've just got one last top row to do here and then this piece will pretty much be done, ready to go back on the cowl. I'm using my handy dandy squeezer. Pneumatic squeezer, pretty awesome tool. I couldn't do this job without it, honestly, because this row of rivets right here was impossible to get to with a rivet gun. So you needed to squeeze them somehow. I probably could have done the rest with a gun, but it's so much easier with the pneumatic squeezer and it's so nice and controlled and none of the drama of trying to drive a rivet with a gun. Also, I'm using soft rivets or A rivets as opposed to AD rivets, which are harder. These are non-structural, better for applications, fiberglass, where you don't want to over squeeze the material and cause cracking. Yeah, let's put the last few in and move on with our life. I'm also upsizing the holes from dash threes to dash fours and three thirty second to eighth inch rivets for a number of reasons. I'm not gonna go into all the details, but it's working out pretty nice. That rivet's not quite long enough. I'm gonna cut one down. Little over smashed on that one, but uh, totally acceptable in this case.
And there it is. How my nightmare turned into a dream. I mean, I don't think that could have come out any better. I'm really happy that uh, I ended up doing it myself, even though it cost me a lot of time, some money, and a friendship, which wasn't my doing, by the way. I uh, don't need to get into that story, but the the long and the short of it is this this is a nice end result. So hope I never have to do it again. I still have to rivet this thing onto the cowl. That's gonna be a lot of fun. Wish me luck. This is the front surface where it's gonna get riveted. This part is fiberglass, the rest is metal. And the fiberglass here was all chewed up. These holes were destroyed, rivets were just going right through them. So I had to re-glass it, re-countersink it. And that was a lot of fun because I've got a paint line here I don't wanna destroy. I know I'm gonna have to do some paint work here. What I'm probably gonna end up doing is painting this whole front bowl and then probably taping this line off and this line off and painting this whole section. I went and got some paint matched from a pretty awesome local store, Arizona Automotive Paint. See that middle stripe? They matched my paint for me, so I've got some real nice single stage, catalyzed, uh, what is it? It's uh, acrylic urethane paint. So yeah, now I've got the paint color for the airplane. That's pretty cool. Looks different in different lights hard to see but yeah anyways well thanks for watching guys let me know what you think uh, i love to hear the comments and the criticism and the compliments if i deserve them but uh, yeah make sure you check out some of the other videos i'll try to do another take on this once it's together and we got to get this airplane flying so who's going oshkosh i know i'm trying are you see you guys